Gentlemen.
we have to be flexible and we have to be able to respond to our customers' needs. Well, to make and we've heard a lot of feedback from where we are. So obviously, we won't ask for Let's kind of do like a stand up interview type here. Okay. Um, still have fire, fire away. All right, well, what we're looking in is the forward compartment of Proteus. This is the uh, pilot station and the co-pilot station, and where the controls are uh, when it's in demand mode. There is a switch on this panel that takes it into an autonomous mode, and uh, in that mode, nobody's in here. And it, it runs on its own brain, makes its own decision. There is in, uh, in the back, here in the center of the vehicle, there is a compartment that is our cargo compartment, and uh, the Bombay doors are open right now. And from there we can, uh, that mechanism that you're looking at suspends payload packages that we can drop out those doors at specific locations. And those doors open and close when you arrive on station. Okay. In the back, you want to go to the back or? So this, this is the back of the vehicle, and uh, this carries uh, four people, four combat swimmers, or a lot of payload. And uh, uh, so you have to like each other because it's not a lot of space for four guys in dive gear. Uh, okay. Is there anything else about this that is uh, well, interesting? Or? Uh, one of the interesting things that we have here today is there is on the top of the mast, a uh, forward mast, a 360 degree camera, uh, which can be put up kind of like a, a, a periscope. And we're showing the, uh, the view of the show uh, on the little tablet in here. Uh, but it would normally be displayed on, on the display for, at the pilot and co-pilot station. That camera has is, is been under development by Patel, and okay. uh, they are our partner in the vehicle, and uh, that's just some of the things that uh, they're working on. Okay. What's good about Excellent. Is there okay. anything else you'd like to say about this? Or? No, I think that's good. That's good? Ross Lindman, R-O-S-S-L-I-N-D-M-A-N. Okay. What is it that you do here? Okay, I'm with Undersea Solutions Group in Panama City, Florida. We're part of the Huntington Ingalls family, and uh, we specialize in development and building of undersea vehicles and systems. And this is uh, one of our large vehicles. It is uh, unique in the world in that it is a dual mode undersea vehicle. It can be both an unmanned undersea truck or a manned swimmer delivery vehicle. So it's capable of uh, fully autonomous operations or it can carry people. Okay. Uh, what's some of the, what, is the Navy utilizing this already? Or? We are, this vehicle is owned by uh, the company and we lease it to the Navy as a test bed to uh, work on development of undersea payloads, concepts of operations for UUVs, uh, vehicle technologies. Uh, customers that have used it are the Naval Research Laboratory, uh, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City, uh, Naval Special Warfare Command, we did uh, a, a test that was sponsored by them, uh, DARPA, and uh, a number of other activities. What's some of the tests that you guys have done with us so far with the Navy? Well, we carry uh, payloads, and uh, they're customer-specified payloads. Uh, they're not payloads that I can, can really talk a lot about, but like uh, a customer will have uh, some specialized technology that uh, is to go on board a either a UUV or sometimes even a larger platform, and we are able to take it to sea and test it in real-world conditions. 
Uh, the vehicle also has the capability of, uh, aside from being a test bed, it has tactically useful payload and range, so it is uh, a, also a, available as a contingent operational capability. Well, it is. It has a, a full suite of autonomous behaviors. Uh, it it ha is able to deliver payload to specific locations autonomously. In, uh, underneath the, the vehicle, there are uh, cargo bay or bomb bay doors that open and close. It has a mechanism inside that uh, drops payload packages. It's able to go someplace and park on the bottom and uh, talk to a sensor network through an undersea modem and so be a hub in a, in a network. Uh, it may lay down that sensor field and then go sit on the bottom and talk to it. Um, it's able to stay on station for a, a, a good number of days, so it has good persistence and it has good range. Okay. So I gotta ask, how much does something like this cost? Well, that's always the big question, isn't it? But uh, it's a, approximately a $10 million vehicle for the vehicle that you see here. Now, if a customer comes and they want a, uh, an elaborate sensor suite, then that would add to it. But the platform itself is about a $10 million platform. How long has something like this been developed? Uh, Proteus it will, on September the 10th, it will mark its uh, fourth year, finish its fourth year uh, of operations. It has about uh, 1,650 hours of dive time on it. It just recently committed, completed a nonstop 30-day mission, simulated mission in our test tank. Uh, so it, uh, it has, while it looks pretty here in the show, uh, it, it's not a, uh, a, it took some effort to get it because it's, it is a working vehicle. And in fact, uh, when the show is over, it goes back to work. Uh, for the Navy in the next month. Okay. So next question is, how long can something like this stay underneath water? Uh, this vehicle has a persistence of about a week. Uh, it depends on how the mission breaks down, but we're able to execute a, a mission on the order of a week, depending on uh, how fast, how far, and what you're doing. Okay. You mean like a week straight? A week straight. Now, we're able to double that. Uh, so this is set up to carry people or be a truck. Excuse me, a gentleman. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't even see that. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll start right from the uh, question I was like asking: uh, Can it stay underneath water for a week? You, said a week. That you like want me to get to my people to block here? Okay. Someone else comes here. Okay. It's like while we're in a, at a break, I might as well go and check everything, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, so when you say a week, does that mean a week straight? Yes, it can stay under undersea a week straight. We're able, uh, without people on board, to double the battery loadout and actually make that two weeks. Okay, so. This doesn't even need to be, uh, you don't even need people in it. It does not need require people in it. It brings the capability uh, in a mission to be able to run some legs of the mission with people and other legs completely autonomously. It has on board 12 computers that are, uh, that take and run it when, when there's, in, when it's in the autonomous mode. Uh, what depth can this go to? Uh, unmanned, it goes to about 200 feet. And uh, uh, with people on it, you're limited by the man, and so it's about 150 feet. Okay, gotcha. And uh, this thing, batteries, and what, what power is it? Uh, this uh, has a lithium polymer battery pack. Uh, it is the same set of batteries, pressure independent batteries from Bluefin Robotics that are uh, being used in the Navy's. Okay. <laughs> You don't yeah. mind answering that again. <laughs> okay. It has on board a, a lithium polymer battery pack. It's using the same pressure independent batteries that are uh, 
uh, from Bluefin Robotics that are currently uh, being certified for the Knife Fish program. Okay. Excellent. Um, is there anything else? What, what's something about this thing that you don't think people typically know about or something that you wish people knew about this? Well, the big thing about it is the dual mode aspect and The big, the big thing uh, about the vehicle uh, that makes it unique in the world right at the moment is the dual mode aspect. So if you're uh, on a mission and it's on board a submarine and a dry deck shelter, uh, you can only have one vehicle in there. Uh, this demonstrates the feasibility of having one vehicle that can do both the UUV missions and the SDV mission. So it gives the commander a, a more tools in the toolbox. Want me to do that again? <laughs> I can get somebody to block this. I think I was basically done. Unless there's something you want to add. No, we're good. We're good? Okay. Um, real quick. All right. Can you tell me about what's behind you? So behind me is uh, a liquid robotics wave glider. It's an SV3 model. It is a autonomous unmanned surface vehicle and it's intended to go on very long duration missions at sea. Okay. Uh, how is it able to do that? Can I just, it's the shark. Oh, okay. Can we review that one? So it's, it's the, the shark. Okay. So I'm standing in front of a, a liquid robotics shark unmanned surface vehicle, which is an autonomous vehicle that's intended to go on long-range, long-duration missions at sea. Okay. And how is it able to do that? Well, it's, uh, I guess our secret sauce, if you will, is that it uses uh, a combination of wave and solar energy. It's completely green, and it has the unique uh, proposition of using the vertical motion of waves, capturing the, en the energy mechanically of waves to propel the vehicle. So there is no fuel on board. And then it captures uh, solar energy, converts that to electrical power, which is stored on board. And that's used for the sensors and the communications. OK. So what else is it about this vehicle that makes it special, that makes it unique? I think the one thing that makes this vehicle unique is its ability to stay at sea on mission for very long periods of time. We're talking about months at a time, up to a year uh, on, on uh, emissions of uh, varying, um, no, I'm losing it. I was gonna, my next question was going to be, so what is its mission? Right. Well, the wave glide, sorry. The shark has the, uh, the great ability to act as a platform for uh, a number of sensors. So it's very configurable for the actual uh, end use of the customer. It's presently being used in the oil and gas industry. Uh, certainly here at Sea Air Space, we're interested in defense applications, and those include intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, as well as anti-submarine warfare, and other things that might require putting sensors and communications in places that are difficult to get to with manned vehicles. So what exactly is the design of sense? The, the what? Uh, what? What can it sense? What kind of? Well, the wave glider has the, the ability to host communications and sensors that are designed for a particular mission. And so in many cases, our customers will bring those sensors to us. Sensors could be things like measuring environmental assessment. So it could be the temperature, the salinity, um, the, the um, oxygen content within the, within the ocean uh, surface layer. Uh, it can be passive anti-submarine warfare. Uh, it can be acoustic sensing. It can be sensing in the air uh, and through the atmosphere. And as well, we have the ability to have satellite communications 24-7, 365. Okay. What's something about, uh, what's something about this that uh, you don't know if too many people know about? What's something about it that you wish people knew about it? Well, one of the things that I think is a uh, it actually has a very high cool factor is that we hold the Guinness Book of World Records record for the longest autonomous unmanned vehicle transit uh, over 
9,000 miles, uh, 411 days from essentially San Francisco to Sydney, Australia. And by the way, that's longer than the Mars rover went. Uh, the wave glide, God, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The shark has uh, the, the capability to communicate uh, to the cloud, uh, back to a uh, command and control facility, but it can also uh, work in, a, in an autonomous but fully netted way between systems. So you can envision fleets of shark vehicles out there with interoperability and communications between the platforms. So it gives you, in, in effect, the ability to have a very netted system of systems at sea. Does it kind of work like a, like a swarm type thing? Or? Absolutely. Sharks can act as a swarm. The swarming behavior is, is built in. It's cooked into the software. So we have a very advanced autonomy engine on board, and we can uh, operate them individually or as fleets or as, as you say, swarms. Well, the beauty of the command and control being by satellite, it allows it to be uh, operated anywhere in the world. So uh, they have literally been in every ocean of the globe. They've, they've operated in the Arctic, around Antarctica, and in every ocean uh, around the globe. There is no limitation. How long has this been in development? The, the company has been around since 2007. I think the first prototype was around 2005. Uh, this vehicle came out in late 2013, uh, this SV3 Shark uh, is our latest iteration. Uh, very, very high TRL though for defense customers, a Very about 350 vehicles swimming around the world, out in the wild if you will, and um, it has a, a great rigorous testing procedure and we feel very comfortable putting them to sea for very long periods of time. It is. Uh, so sharks are part of several Navy programs. We've been in a couple of SBIRs with the Office of Naval Research. We're currently in a program uh, with, with the Prime, Lidos, uh, supporting uh, PMS 485. Uh, and there are a number of uh, special access programs. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody knows what it is. Right, yeah. I don't want to say it anyway. Uh, the Shark vehicle is in use and has been in use for Navy programs for a number of years. In fact, our first Defense Department customer was uh, part of the Navy. Uh, we've had a very successful collaboration with the Naval Oceanographic Office, with the Office of Naval Research, and many, many others, uh, the Navy Research Lab, many other uh, Navy agencies. I'm trying to think about, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure the answer to that. Ran. Okay. But don't worry about it. All right. Well, I mean, I can answer. Well, I can just say, the, the shark vehicle is a commercial item, so it's covered under a commercial jurisdiction. It is not ITAR controlled, and that has given us the latitude to sell to uh, foreign governments as well. So we have had uh, several collaborations through channel partners, uh, including the Royal Australian Navy. Anything else you'd like to add? No. It's <laughs> the coolest thing out there. Real quick, uh, if I could get you to uh, look at me and uh, say your name and what you do here. Hi, my name is Don Jago. I'm a retired Navy captain, but I am now happily the Senior Director for Business Development for the Navy for Liquid Robotics Incorporated, a company based in Sunnyvale, California. Okay. And uh, if I could get you to spell your name real quick. Uh, Jago, J-A-G-O-E. Okay. First name Donald. 
can I get you to spell your first name as well? Yep, D-O-N-A-L-D. Okay, excellent. All right, thanks, Thank you. Thank you.